Okay, 10 weeks to go until Abu Dhabi Marathon. And this week has been a disaster of training, life, work, projects, everything has just overflowed and became, I'd taken on too much this week. And I'll let you know how that sort of gets into your training because work gets in the way. Of course it does, and your business might get in the way and it affects your training in ways that maybe you don't even think about. So I'll come on to that after I've given you sort of a, a rundown on the week. So if you remember, the previous Saturday had been sort of a medium long run, which I'd fitted in so that I could do the all in run club 5k on the Sunday and that had just been the Saturday medium long run had been 16k plus warm up cool down probably 19 20k but was medium long run so it wasn't tapping into that long run so that I needed that long run this week in order to sort of push my endurance and stamina on it's not happened Monday easy run because the Sunday previous to that the all in run club it's kind of an easier effort, sort of 20 minutes or 20, just over 20 minutes for 5K. Monday easy run, 50 minutes, a lot of it out there, sort of in the heat, and then I'll bring it in inside. Tuesday, exactly the same, easy run. And then the Wednesday was the interval session. So I did 20 times 500 meters. 12 of those reps were at 4%, which is, I can push it at 4%, but I'm not sort of like the heart rate is not going wild. Um, so it's in control, but the idea was to do sort of 12 of them at a hill at 4%, then bring the hill down to 2%, which is not really a hill, I class that as flat, and then do the final eight at flat. So you can see that my heart rate has gone down in the final eight, and that's the reason why. The speed has stayed the same, but the heart rate um, has come down because the gradient is less. Thursday, complete rest. And when I, say, when I always say that, it's kind of like, I still go through the same thing. So I still wake up, the kit's laid out the night before, and I, I go into default mode, that I need to earn my breakfast. So I need to go out there and walk, get some daylight and sunshine in my eyes, and sort of think, okay, how does the day look? What am I trying to do today? Uh, then Friday, recovery run, just 45 minutes. I had to rush to a meeting. And so I ended up cutting that short a little bit. And you know, this is, it's all about planning and it's all about marathon running and distance running is essentially project management. And if other aspects of your life need to fall into that, it's really important that you outsource your thinking so that you can focus on the running, focus on the stuff that really makes you happy or the project that you really want to put in place. It doesn't matter whether your running is priority number seven in your life or priority number one. If you outsource your thinking, your running is gonna get better. Um, Saturday, yesterday, easy run, 50 minutes. And I, I've now sort of, no matter how hot it is out there, I think it was 36 degrees, I do more than 30 minutes. So 31 minutes I did outside and then brought it in and did the final sort of 20 minutes on the treadmill. And then today was the first, we're at one location with the All In Run Club. Today was open in the second location. So the idea was it's at the beach, so it's a great place to go long. Somebody just scored or got a wicket. Um, it's a great place to go long. So the idea was to do the all-in run club, 5K, and then there's lots of people around and therefore I could sort of go off and do my own thing. It just didn't happen. And it was wishful thinking and bad planning for me to think that I could just sort of finish the all-in run club, finish the 5K, time everybody, get everybody's notes down and then do a session afterwards. Wishful thinking. It's not like I'm going to a park run in the UK and everything's organized for me. I can do completely my own thing. It's not like that. So it's wishful thinking, which has meant that just as last week and the week before, the long run has now been pushed to tomorrow. So you're starting your week with a long run, which is going to take a lot out of me. And then I've got the rest of my life to fit into the rest of the day. But the long run takes priority in the morning. That's the, that's the thing that takes priority. And whether it sort of takes me up to midday or two o'clock, it doesn't matter. That's the priority and everything else gets put on to my day afterwards. So as I always bang on about, Wednesday interval session, weekend, Sunday long run. And if you're hitting the endurance and stamina and you're hitting that speed endurance and speed, you're laughing over the training schedule. 10 weeks to go and next week is a race weekend. 10 mile race at Maidan Racecourse, which I'm really glad that's happening because it's gonna smarten me up. It's gonna be like, you're putting in the work, but you're not putting the emphasis on what needs to actually happen in order for you to be in marathon shape in nine, 10 weeks time. So next week will really smarten me up and that's what races do to you. So I'd always suggest that if you're aiming for a marathon that is, or a race, a half marathon, 5K that is 10 weeks away or 15 weeks away or somewhere in the distance that doesn't seem imminent, 
it's not kind of on your brain all the time, I would put intermediate goals along the way. And that might be shorter distances, it might be slower paced runs, but I would definitely give yourself checks, which hold you accountable to do the training, but also to get yourself race ready. Um, I think it's really important. I think, you know, this week, you've got to constantly check yourself and figure out, okay, where am I at the moment? What am I capable of running in the marathon? What do I think I'm capable of right now? And how can I alter that during the course of a training schedule? A lot can happen if you do the right things. Me laying my kit out the night before is a ritual that I've had for, for a long time. And what it does for me is, first thing in the morning, I'm running. It's my priority. And even if you know, I'm in a full-time career, my health and fitness is my priority. So that's happening number one, and that has my primary focus. And by laying out the kit, it's kind of the thinking's gone. I don't have to think, oh, what socks, what shorts, what, what shirt, what shoe, it's all done the day before. And in the same way, I've also got a to-do list. So as soon as I get back from my run, I've got a to-do list, I've got a day plan, and the to-do list is not just a list of the things that I'd like to accomplish that day, or that week, or ideally in the next two weeks. It's prioritized, and it's you know non-urgent, urgent, non-important, important. And it's, that's really important for me because when you've got lots going on, and you try to put marathon training in, or 5K training, or 10K training, whatever you're training for, add to that to your life, all of a sudden runs get missed because you're pulled into a meeting because you've got to get on a Zoom call. Then somebody doesn't call you and it's like, I miss both things and it's rubbish and it feels terrible. It feels like you're getting behind and then you start to panic, am I in the right shape? Am I able to get the right fitness in order to do the race? And you start to doubt yourself. It's literally project management. And that's why I'm pretty, frust not frustrated, I'm pretty angry at myself because I know better. And this week getting away from me and not doing my long run today pisses me off a little bit because I know th that I should have seen that coming and it was so obvious and everything is obvious and it, that includes injuries and sort of why do you think you got injured well you did three sessions within a five-day period what did you think was going to happen so when it's that obvious you've got to give yourself a kick and and sort of like get yourself back on track and to constantly reflect on your training and as I said the other day to take notes on your training how did that feel I know how it looks on Strava or Garmin Connect or whatever, but how did it feel? How did I sleep the night before? What was my stress like? What did I eat that day? What's working? What's not working? What needs to be removed? And so moving forward, it's like I need to course correct. Otherwise, that, that's going to keep getting in the way. And although it's a brilliant initiative and I'm loving sort of these 5Ks, the All-In Run Club, it's fantastic. In, or, in order for me to succeed on my goal to run a marathon quickly or relatively quickly, in 10 weeks time, I need to course correct in order for that to happen. And so the structure needs to change. Everyone always says, you've only got so many hours in the day. And of course that's true. But what's infinitely more important than that is you've only got so, many en so much energy for those hours. And so if you are not prioritizing your fitness, so you're not prioritizing your running, you're putting that at the end of the day, that session, and you've got something like I did 20 times 500 meters, but it's at 7 p.m. after you've done a full day work. Maybe you've got kids at home and they woke you up super early. You've not eaten perfectly because you're at the office and that's kind of convenience food or whatever. I'm going into every single session thinking, I want to get 100 out of 100 in this training session, whether it's a long run, whether it's an interval session, but also the recovery runs and easy runs. I want to get 100 out of 100. For a recovery run or easy run, it's me feeling way better at the end. How much better do I feel at the end than I did at the start? How much fresher are my legs now compared to what they were when we started? For an interval session, I want to be hitting those splits. I want to be getting the maximum out of my body for that day. And so if you then push that to the end of the day and anything can get in the way, you get pulled into all sorts. Somebody calls you, you gotta get something. All of a sudden something urgent drops on your desk or drops into your email box. It's not what you want. And especially if, you're, if running is in your top 10 priorities for the day, you may as well do it as soon in the day as you possibly can. And I promise you, it's way more productive in terms of you turning your, before, before having breakfast, you turning your body into a fat burning machine. One of the biggest steps forward I ever had was most of my runs, recovery runs and easy runs, are not fueled. And a lot of my long runs and interval sessions at the moment are not fueled. And that's turning my body and it has been a, a, a five, 10 year process or a seven year process 
But turning my body into a fat burning machine means that I'm lighter, means that I can tap into fat stores as opposed to glycogen way easier and at a higher heart rate. So once you add sugar, once you add the sports drink and the gels, you feel like you're flying, you feel like it's really easy. So you get that benefit for, from it. So then it's taking care of your endurance, your stamina, your cardiovascular health, and also your physical health, but also it's, it's making you leaner and therefore look better and feel better about yourself if fat loss, if weight loss is a, is a thing for you. So you've got that. And so if you go into those sessions thinking, I want to get 100 out of 100 on this test, and how do I best set myself up for success? I'm gonna revise for the exam. I'm gonna put in the work so that the race is actually easier. I'm gonna do the training so that the race is as easy as possible. And right now I'm training to be able to do more training, to be able to handle more volume. So training pace to be able to handle more at that pace. And that's how it is in, in terms of the cycles within the training program. And this will make racing, which is why next week is so important for me because it's gonna give me that kick that I need to be like, this is where you are right now. This is the reality of it. And you've got nine weeks before Abu Dhabi Marathon. So what next week will tell me is you're not ready. You're not ready, but you've got nine weeks, 10 weeks to, in order to prepare for it. And therefore you can course correct, but you need to put in the work. I think going back to work, business getting in the way of your, you know, your passion, your running. And I know, I get it. It might not be priority number one for absolutely everybody, but it's certainly up there if you're willing to sacrifice this level of time time with your family, time away from work, those things. So if, you, if you're clever about it and you're putting it in the right side of your day and you're giving it the attention that it deserves in order to set yourself up for success, then you're great. When it comes to that to-do list afterwards and that day structure, for me, I've kind of learned over the years that, as I said, you've only got so many hours in the day and you've only got so much energy for those hours. And if you add into that a hard interval session, or a specific long run and you're really hitting it, then you, bet, you better get what you need done as quickly as possible or have a siesta and then come back to it later. If you work from home or if you, you know, work for yourself, you've got the luxury of that, but it is a luxury. And for me, within those hours, I've, I, can, I can achieve five or six important things. That's it. So if I can move my life, day, work, business, etc., forward by five or six things per day, so that means you've got to quantify the, each individual task. How long is it going to take me? And be brutally honest with yourself. You think things are going to take you 10 minutes. Actually, it's a 45 minute task or it's an hour and a half task. Once you've sort of got on the phone to somebody to figure out, you know, what's happening with this project. What do I need to do in order to get this over the line? It's usually longer. So you've got to be real with yourself. But to do this and get practice at it will make you much better. We think an interval session is 20 times one minute with 60 seconds rest, oh great, 40 minutes. Once you add into that the warm up, cool down, once you add into that getting ready, driving maybe to the track or driving maybe to the, to the area that you're doing it, driving back, once you factor in all those things, you're talking an hour and a half and you know that this is the case and, and therefore trying to fit an interval session into your lunch hour is going to be inefficient ineffective or at best suboptimal. So it needs your attention. And so waking up a little bit earlier to make sure that happens is well worth your time. You get a lot of bang for your buck for that. So for me, this week has been perfect example. You know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to go on in the day for me to push my, uh, to push towards my goals. And running, although it's priority number one, it just needs to go up a level. It needs to be like, you're gonna get found out in 10 weeks unless you really put the work in and unless you give it the attention and respect that it deserves, which it's your passion for crying out loud, get on board.